Your latest uh, Wall Street Journal op-ed, former Federal Reserve nominee Judy Shelton dives into how she sees inflation uh, fueling government growth. She joins us now. She's currently a senior fellow at the Independent Institute. In the article, your, your op-ed piece the other day, Judy, just uh, it just kind of sums up a lot of things that are, you know, sort of implicit or sort of obvious, but, but you know, when you explain it clearly, uh, I think you really can connect some dots uh, to what's happening. We just had Leesman on. I don't know if you were watching, but he talked about how the sacrifice ratio has been zero, that, that we haven't really seen. Uh, as you uh, talk about last year, FedPal warned that uh, we would have to forcefully <clears throat> battle inflation and bring some pain, quote, bring some pain to households and businesses. Which is unfortunate. <laughs> when you say that, it just you read it out loud. It's like, do, do you have to? And, and uh, it, that maybe hasn't happened, and rates have, have come down. Uh, but that that seems like the Fed has no problem just verbalizing that and trying to do it. And that's a bad position to be in. Well, I think so. I think we give an enormous amount of power to our central bank to say that you're allowed to inflict pain. You're allowed to cause households and businesses to, to do less well than they otherwise would because you're deliberately going to impose restrictive rates. So we give the Fed the power to, to punish the private sector. And I think the Fed's model says that's what you have to do to make up for the, the fiscal errors that are committed by a government that has no budgetary discipline. So it's kind of a, a bad one-two punch from our government as far as private enterprise is concerned. And, and we've talked about the unholy alliance, maybe, between fiscal and monetary policy. And you, you really can't, you can't really do the, the fiscal, the uncontrolled fiscal without the uncontrolled monetary policy. So you, you talk about it being enablers. And you had a great quote in your piece from... I don't know, I, he's almost an idol for, for uh, supply siders, uh, Friedrich Hayek. Uh, all those who, who wish to stop the drift toward increasing government control should concentrate their efforts on monetary policy. So that, that's kind of where it starts. And I understand how it works, Judy, because the, 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 there are good intentions on all the spending that we do. We're trying to narrow the, the income gap, and we're trying to prov provide a safety net. But you do too much of that and you end up with inflation that hurts the people that you were trying to help right, right from the very start. Well, that's true. And it also gives the government the inside track on, on borrowing money. Because the Treasury will always go to auction, and they'll pay whatever interest rate they have to to get the funds to pay for the deficit spending. But the private sector faces real obstacles when the cost of capital gets so high. For the private sector, there are stark decisions to make about whether they can or cannot expand their business. Maybe they have to cut back, and maybe they even have to let some of those hard-won employees go. And, and so I think the danger, and what Hayek was alluding to, is increasing growth of government. It's the influence of government over the direction of the economy. We saw through the Inflation Reduction Act that the White House and, and congressional Democrats were able to justify the spending by saying, well, ultimately, it's going to lead to greater output. But that's exactly what private sector activity tries to do. They, nobody goes and gets a loan because they think we're going to uh, reduce the amount of output. They're trying to get money to finance um, providing more goods or services. And yet, through its restrictive rate of interest, that's, that's precisely what the Fed is trying to suppress, that kind of economic activity. So I just think we see where, where that's going, because um, what is a barrier to the private sector is not a barrier to government. That's interesting. Yeah. Andrew. Judy, I, the, the question that I wanted to ask you is a little bit of, of what we were talking to Steve about at the beginning of this, which is if Powell says today, I'm just going to wait and see, and I, a lot of, there's some people who would like him to wait and see, but that creates its own sort of sense of um, uncertainty. 
And so, I mean, I think a lot of people would like him to say, I'm, I'm never going to raise again, obviously. But what do you think the, what do you think both the market thinks, but also how the Fed thinks about the market in that regard? Exactly, Andrew. Um, I think about those those same issues because I'm waiting for the Fed. I mean, I think they should have paused two meetings ago. But what they should be asking themselves is, does their does their model actually work? Because he was promising the pain. We didn't get the pain. So their model says that we would have had even lower unemployment and even higher growth if we hadn't raised interest rates so much to the, to the point of restricting economic activity. So one question I ask is at whose expense is that restrained growth? And that's why I worry about the private sector. But I do think a, a big question should be for the people at the Fed to ask themselves, what if the model is, is not working the way we thought because we didn't get the pain and so that should tell us that if inflation were to tick up again, maybe we shouldn't automatically say, well, we have to suppress economic activity even more and go even higher, because it may not, that may not be the trade-off at all. And in that case, they would be contributing to, to reduce supply in the face of demand. 